Hi, this is Bernard Harris, and welcome to Be Talk. Today we have with us another special guest, UC Park Parson and Parson in from Luke Basketball Training. Hi, UC. Welcome to the show, man. Hi, Bernard, and thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. You heard me struggle with that last name, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, it's a doozy. Um, it's called Parsinen. 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 Parsinen, yeah. Okay. My grandfather was in the 20s. He, he was in the United States, and he changed his surname, his family name, because of that. It was difficult. Really? Wow. Okay, okay. Well, we, we're, we're almost uh, cooking on the same stove now. Yeah. Anyway, uh, welcome, welcome to the show. Uh, Thanks a lot. Tell me, tell me a little bit about your about your background. My background? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it was a long journey for me to, to end up being a basketball coach. I mean, uh, this is my jubilee. It's my 50th year on the planet Earth. So okay. I'm 49 now. Okay. And, uh, okay. But yeah, glad but, you yeah. made it. Glad you made the journey. <laughs> yeah, I'm still going strong. Yeah. <laughs> Halfway there, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, if God's willing. Okay. Yeah, but what to say? Um, uh, uh, I was born in the first of January in Yuvaskula, and um, I had we were a sporty family. There were uh, three brothers. I'm, I'm the middle one. And we all did sports, individual sports. Mom and dad, they were all supportive. And uh, I did, uh, in the summer, track and field. In the winter, skiing, biathlon. Biathlon I did for 12 years. It was my first love, so to speak. And uh, I nearly got into, into basketball when I was 13 or 14. Uh, I was, uh, we played at school, of course, and I, I felt I was good at it. And I almost joined the club in Yvaskula at the time. It was Honsu, the same club that Lauri Markkanen started his career right. much, much later. Right. Anyway, but for some reason, I didn't. I, I'm not sure if I went to the tryouts or not, but, but um, I, I think it was my parents who said that that it's either or because I, I don't have time to do everything and maybe because of that i think that i i chose the the sports that i already did okay okay yeah so and and how did after you, that, got, how did sorry. you eventually get into the coaching side of basketball Oh yeah, well, there was a couple of turns in there between because then I played for you know, five years. I played guitar intensively. Uh, I started a rock band and wanted to become a rock star first. Didn't and we all? Didn't we all? Didn't we all? Didn't we all? And didn't we all kind of get it? I mean, we are rock stars of our life. Exactly. But, yeah. And then I went to the, my to my military service, uh, which is obligatory in Finland, and. Um, I'm kind of still on the same path. I mean, that I chose that as a career. I still have a day job. I'm serving in the Finnish defense forces as a captain. Okay. And uh, at those times, I also got introduced to, to martial arts, which had a huge impact in my life. Uh, I trained several times in Japan and uh, became a teacher. I ran uh, five different dojos in different cities in Finland, and uh, ninth then ninth then black belt, and uh, that that had a huge impact. And uh, I think that's uh, one of the main reasons that that I'm uh, I'm pretty good and known for for my analysis of, of human body and how how, uh, how human body works, how to produce force with the, with the body and and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I have I have always uh, enjoyed sports and moving myself and enjoying experimenting stuff. And uh, if we just go a little bit back and, and I'll tell you this this funny story about about my childhood when my mom. Actually, she has she has told me that that I started moving way before I, I could walk and way before I could even even stand on my own, because the story goes that that she put me into bed this this baby cot uh, that has these vertical bars around it, right. and she left me in the bedroom and went to the kitchen to do something else, and and I wasn't going to be okay with that and. 
And I, I, I just stood up and, and supporting myself, grabbing both hands with the bars. And, and I started shaking and rocking the bed so violently that it started to move. And I, I got really good at it later. But you can imagine the first time my mom's surprised face and the, the, um, the horror-like movie scene when she yeah, came to see me and imagine. saw me in the hallway. I, was... <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, movement, the movement has been in you from the, from yeah. the start. Yeah, yeah, and um, since then I haven't been been still. And also, it was funny that that was that was I was just a couple months old, and I could walk. Maybe I think I think I was nine months or something that I could already walk, but I didn't say a word. I didn't uh, say any sound from my, from my mouth. And it was not until two years that I spoke, and it was immediately like sentences. But before that, my parents they were thinking that maybe I should have me tested, and that these these are my father's words that that maybe maybe he is not normal. And he said that yeah, it turned out to be right. <laughs> but then they vaccinated me, me with a phonograph needle, and the the talk hasn't stopped. How how did you come up with this uh, loop basketball yeah. training theory? Yeah, the, well, that was that was a coincidence. First, my, my eight-year-old daughter uh, gamed into basketball. He fell in love to the game. And when the, when the club in our town uh, won the first championship, and we were there in the finals watching, watching and evidencing it, and it was, it was so huge, and, and the crowd and the atmosphere, it was so great. And my, my daughter, like, dropped everything and, and was like, I want to play basketball. Okay. Uh, eventually, she did, and... Um, I got involved with the team. I was a team manager, and pretty soon after that, I started playing also. And and then uh, uh, I wasn't good. I was like I couldn't dribble the ball and put the ball behind my my, my legs without losing it. I was I was bad. Uh, but I wanted to do it, and uh, maybe maybe um, six months of recreational games. I went to I went to join this club, and because I wanted to measure out my potential and then see whether I could do and compete. Right. And I joined the lower division uh, team, and uh, I felt I was always in their way, and um, I couldn't I didn't know when to cut and when not to, and um, because they were old players, you know. So it, it, was, it was wordless and communication between them and I was like there <laughs> it was difficult and then uh, I, I started asking questions and I started to uh, to asking that maybe we, we could set some rules to maybe implement some team tactics and they were yeah, yeah you you'll be an assistant coach then I was like okay and I started I started like rigorously studying the game and um, I, I dove really deep into into that I watched games all, all the time and and uh, the head coach wasn't wasn't so active so he kind of let me do what I wanted to do and he was like <laughs> nonchalant about that and and, um, and we, we played for a couple of years um, of this version of triangle offense. And, uh, well, next year already I was a head coach and we succeeded. We leveled up to the third division and and um, then things got on from that. So that was a jump start to my coaching, like immediately after I, I started playing. It was like a decade ago, approximately. Yeah. And... Um, and then uh, th uh, what happened was that I, uh, I got into this um, Finnish baseball accident. <laughs> I mean, Finnish baseball, I, I was playing with all of my working working mates. And, uh, right. and uh, I was I was just lunging there and dislocated my shoulder there and and uh, tore a muscle on my back. And it, I, was, I was six months away from any physical act activity, only three months. Uh, well, okay. Okay, okay. Actually, it was whole uh, six months of, of recovery, and during that time, and even before, I started to paying attention to more to to my teammates' shooting technique, and I was asking about it a lot because because I didn't know how to shoot either, of course. And uh, to my surprise, it was that no one in my club, which is a, one of the biggest clubs in Finland, no one knew exactly. 
uh, how to shoot or how to tell me about it. Maybe they were a bit shy to to share their information because they thought that that my, this is a, a trap for them to say. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're modest people and um, and not claiming to be an expert on anything, even though probably they knew. Right, but I hard kept to asking. pull that information out. Yeah. Anyway, I kept asking, and uh, and uh, eventually I found some players. I already had watched for years some, some YouTube channels and games and watched how the players actually played. And uh, they seemed to have the same sources that I did. So I said, okay, I can do this. And uh, I started using a lot of video in the, in the practice sessions and analyzing their, their movement and comparing with the, with the professional players. I started interviewing professional players and pro coaches also and, and networking, connecting with all players and coaches that I could get a hand on. And uh, I, I participated in probably every coaching clinic I could then. And I still do probably. Uh, I love them. And it's a good way to, to connect with people and network. Right. And, and then I think it was uh, part of my my persona, which is this, this persistence and uh, that curiosity that I have inbuilt in me so that, that I could, I could, um, I was, I was trying to, to find um, ways to measure out things about shooting and, and conceptualize it. And uh, I was, as I said, I was doing a lot of videos and slow motion videos to, to watch exactly with my martial arts background and how to use body and what is, what is the core functions of it. And uh, one method was to track the ball movement. How, what is the, the motion of the ball and, and what kind of a path it, it goes? So uh, at, at the side view angle, I tried different angles, but side view angle, when I tracked the ball and uh, I had this uh, pro player as my model. So one time I did, uh, I tracked the ball and, and saw that the... the the track, the the sign, the drawing, it resembled like a loop. And I was like, whoa, that can't be right. It's way too complicated and not what I expected. I expected the ball motion and then the path that would be quite linear, but it wasn't. So I thought it was an error and I, I draw another one, then I drew another one and another one. And to this day, I haven't stopped. I don't know, I'm, I'm in a loop maybe myself. <laughs> maybe this is the contribution part, a sequel to that horror movie. You could be, you could be. Yeah, Groundhog, Groundhog Day or something. How, yeah, do, anyway. you, how do you see being uh, a specialist as a shooting coach compared to general coaching, coaching of teams or players, you can say? How, how would I differentiate myself? Yeah. Well, nowadays, uh, I no longer, uh, I'm, I'm no longer a member of, of any coaching staff. Um, and actually, I think Ben, we have played together, I played against each other as a coach. I think so. Maybe. One time in Punic. Punic Maybe, because I was, yeah. Could be. Yeah, I, was, I was four years, it, it, it's been a couple of years since, but okay. uh, four years ago, uh, four years, I was a uh, part of the uh, um, boys under under 19, the coaching staff. Right. Was there an assistant coach. And I think okay. we, we have probably sh shook hands. Or yeah, that, uh, let's clear. Yeah, yeah well, let's hope so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I didn't know you at, at, the, at the time, but... Right. but but later on, later on, I learned. Okay, that, okay, you know, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I don't have any recall, but do you, like, do you, do you miss the, the, the coaching uh, of, of being involved in a team around mm. the players, the other coaches? Do you miss that? Not that much because I have my hands full. Uh, the last season I wasn't asked anymore. Maybe maybe people assumed that I was busy and they were right. At least at, after that point that they didn't ask me, so I got busy. I'm I'm a kind of person that that never never stops, and I have a good imagination to to figure out more 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 work to do for myself. And I'm currently I'm, I'm extremely busy and, and I do a lot of stuff. Great, great. Have you? Um, 
have you met any resistance from other coaches and you know clubs and managers and players? Have you met a lot of resistance? Of course, and, and that's a good sign. I think I am. I'm most definitely. I am I'm raising raising emotions on some people, and some good, some positive, but some also negative. And and uh, it it's, it goes without saying that that when with, with my background, and which is which is also a plus and a minus, that I come outside of the basketball, so I see things with different eyes. And I'm I'm, I'm good with uh, working with with uh, with youth and with younger guys, my young girls. And and uh, I have three own kids, and I, I know what, what a little bit about that world in that sense. So I get along with them. Uh, but but to some maybe maybe older or old school uh, coaches, it has been some resistance, and there have been some barriers that I have to overcome and uh, to to prove myself. But uh, I think the acceptance has been I've, I've been accepted pretty well, and um, I'm proud of it. That, that basketball people are in general they are open-minded uh, who want to challenge themselves and uh, and uh, their beliefs and uh, I definitely um, have, a, have a good confidence in teaching what I do because because I um, I'm, I want to clarify and, and set, set it straight now that that I don't promote a new way of shooting I have not added anything to it. I, I haven't tweaked the way most uh, people, or at least the best shooters in the world, shoot. So I have uh, I have them backing me up. I'm trying to coach my. If they, if someone likes to criticize what I do, they can't criticize the outcome that I'm aiming for. But I think that's my that's my rationale to that. So that, uh, but of course, the, the methods that I use and I have created some uh, of my own, how to how to reach that. Right. Uh, that that is, I'm open to criticism, and I, I'm open to to new ideas, and I'm, I'm willing, more than willing to to change my methods and my approach to to coaching. If someone uh, has a good ground for it, I would I would uh, think that most coaches would be open to to something something new at at least giving it a fair shake you know taking a look at it examining it and and going from 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 there with it what are you what do you what are the main components of loop basketball training um the loop basketball training well the name also it, it came only after 2018 when i drew the first loop but beforehand i also already had coached a couple of years and done individual coaching and uh, the concept that i had at the time and, and still is strong in there and a loop is just incorporated on top of that is the, my rule of three s which means feet flow finish and that is a concept Those general words have been used by by many other coaches, and I don't own any trademark to that. But but now I do own the trademark of loop basketball training. And uh, but the core idea of there is, is feet flow finish, and feet flow finish are, are the headlines or or head titles for and symbol symbols for for certain things. And uh, for instance, if I if I go them uh, really quickly, uh, that the feet. Uh, um, it, it symbolizes the quickness of the shot. So that that comes from readiness and, and balance, mainly footwork and stuff like that. There are right. there are maybe maybe six to eight uh, subcategories in each of the, those three. But feet is is uh, speed. Then uh, and these are all my kind of a, um, observations. Then I have combined all the information that I have gathered throughout the years. And then um, flow is the power, and power comes from rhythm, not so much of the muscle tension but rhythm and and the flow of the shot and that there the loop is there um, currently and it is it is very important aspect of the, of the flow so the ball has to be uh, moving all the, all throughout the shot and then um, the finish is the accuracy and accuracy comes from the fact that when you are fast and when you're strong, then you are able to be relaxed. And if you are relaxed, you have a soft touch. And that is all about what affects your, your follow through and your, your accuracy. 
So that's that's what what is my my core concept maybe uh, at the technical uh, level of, of shoot basketball training, a uh, little basketball training. Okay, how how much would you say the mental aspect plays in becoming a good shooter? It's huge. It's huge. Actually, my coaching, if that was the technical part of it, my coaching is divided into three categories, which are which are the, the technical, the shooting technique itself, and the form and the mechanics of, of shooting. Then there are then there are uh, physical training which supports the, the body and makes it mobile and strong enough and the, and the third part is mental mental coaching and it is huge it's incorporated all the way from the start but it's not as explicit it is more implicit uh, communicating with a, with a student and encouraging him and giving positive feedback and and building up trust and building up uh, confidence uh, the reason the reason I asked you about the, the mental part is because uh, I've coached I've coached a lot of teams and a lot of players and I had a long career playing myself uh, and I, I was considered a good shooter um, which I, I think success builds confidence uh, but you see I've seen a lot of players who are good in practice. They'll hit shots from certain points, boom, 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 no problems, uh, look good in practice. As soon as the game starts, they're taking the same shots from the same places on the floor, but they can't make them. What do you think about that? Uh, that that's definitely so. That's definitely so. I, I, I've seen the, the same, and uh, there are there are many reasons for that. But to name a few, I'd say that um, I think students shoot too many practice shots without uh, being contested. So actually, the, di the the difference is huge in the game time situation, and the mental pressure is is totally different. And you don't get also in the games you don't get to shoot so many shots in the, from the same spot and, and that frequency it's, it's like you take less less than 10 or less than 20 shots in a game which is during 40 minutes okay. so so the situation is, is more unique and the mental pressure is totally different then uh, I th I'd say the main reason uh, and I've talked to, to my, my colleagues and mentors about this that main, re main reason for, for players to miss in games is that the decision loop is, is just, just too slow. They, they are not practicing it. So so the, the, it takes time for them to catch the ball, then to see the floor and the player positions and, and distance and space. And, and then they are just starting to think that what should I do? And young people most often put the ball down. And But what I coach is that, that you have to be able to shoot. You are like a, like a pile of, of gunpowder powder and the ball is the spark. So you have to be ready to explode anytime. And you are a first, you are a shooter. If you don't have the shot, you can change it to, to pass or to, to dribble or drive. Uh, but but it's it's very very much more difficult to to other, the other way. If you put the ball down and then decide to shoot, but you were open, for instance, or or if you if you are a fair passer first, then you are looking for pass. Okay, there's no no one open. Should I shoot? It, it's gone. The flow is gone and the rhythm is gone. Also, um, shot selection, it's, it's many, many things. I've, I've just, a couple of days ago, I released a blog post uh, considering the, the shot selection. There are many aspects to it, but you have to, you don't have time to think it like consciously. You have to intuitively understand the situation and your abilities and your teammates and the game situation. And if you, if you play long enough and you, uh, you are educated on that and those aspects, then it becomes much, much more easier. Uh, one, one thing also, because I have I've done uh, these measurements and I still do them. I'm still looking for for better ways and, and different ways to do it. And I've I've done uh, pretty pretty um, exact uh, accurate measurements on timing. And actually, what I've seen that the long distance shots usually when uh, when a person comes to the the, the area that is is not uh, outside of his comfort comfort zone, uh, the the shot usually slows down. 
down because he kind of starts to think that where is that power coming from? It's easy to see when you start close from the basket and you pass the ball and then uh, the player backs off. And when, it, when he reaches the uncomfort zone, the un uncomfortable zone, then uh, it starts to slow down. He, he starts to squat deeper and, and the rhythm is gone and the power is gone. Take a step forward and then you are much stronger there for a magical reason. But it's not because it's because of the rhythm. So I think in game situations, you, get, you don't get to shoot that close to the basket. That also might affect that. It's, it's much more difficult. What do you what do you think muscle memory plays in this? Mm, muscle memory, I think that is a kind of a myth that I think modern sports science has kind of a busted that. But okay. I do under, I do understand that it has more, maybe more something to do with nervous system and that your nervous system and then uh, in that sense, your whole body is, is get, it, it got used to the, the motion through the repetitions. And that is absolutely what I, what I think that is, is valuable. But what are you actually repeating is, is important. I think the, the student has to think and be able to be present on that situation and repeat, you repeat things that are like problem solving. It is not just a repetitive motion of one thing and one thing only, like from one spot 100 times. There might be a time for that too, but I, I'd like to bury the, the drills and bury the, the execution of, of certain drills to do different kinds of things in between. I know that there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of players um, who think that if they just go in and get up three, they shoot three or four hundred times a day, a certain shot is going to automatically make them a good shooter. I don't I don't necessarily agree with that. And the reason I don't is because it does. I think it doesn't help you if you're shooting three hundred or a thousand shots if you're shooting it the wrong way. Exactly, exactly. I'd say 400 shots in a day is a good start if you compare it not shooting at all. But that's also a problem with, with some coaches, I think, that uh, I mentioned earlier that, that some of the instructions are may, maybe old-fashioned or biased or some even, even plain wrong. And I'd, see, I'd say also that... Uh, uh, these biased instructions, the, it, ha it has uh, made it more, much more difficult and even prevented some players to get better at shooting because because they are not um, they they are something different than they are something um, that I would say almost like arrogant way of thinking and not not um, making the the full research uh, that how best shooters actually shoot and if it, if it's contradicting that then it's that it's it's dangerous dangerous zone. I think that, that it, it's, it might be difficult. And sometimes the best advice in that case should, could be that just use volume, use repetitions and shoot a lot and teach yourself. But that is also avoiding the coach's responsibility to, to teach everybody. I think good shooters and good athletes, they, they will learn anyway. So, so regardless of the coaching, but some players really struggle and I have, I've been approached with so many players who are confused because uh, so many coaches have contradicting instructions, their own beliefs of the system. And for some reason I have gained their trust they have came to me uh, and said that can I just forget all this all these other things which I don't know which, what to choose because it's very difficult I, I, I'd say from my own experience too that uh, a lot of information is floating around in the internet time especially and um, and to separate good and bad information from each other is, is difficult sometimes it's tough. so it's tough. Uh, yeah and I'm not saying that I that I know everything, but at least my I, I have a certain goals for players and certain goals for coaches, which are crystal clear to me. And uh, when I when I tell them, uh, then they can agree with me or not. And I say that it's it's your responsibility to put put the ball in the basket. Don't blame me if you if you sh don't succeed. Right, but, right. But because I'm not there to hold your hand. And if, if you if you do succeed, then it's it's of course the honor is all mine. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> anyway, anyway. Well, you got you got you got the coach's mentality. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what do you what do you think about accuracy versus technique? In other words, does it matter what technique you use as long as you can put the ball in the basket? Well, uh, the best shooters shoot with different kinds of, of technique. I mean, that Stephen Curry is a so versatile player. Of course, not any, anybody should immediately compare themselves to, to him, but he's, he's a master. And he shoots with so many different styles. There is not just one shot that's repeatable. Or maybe it is, but he's adjusting his technique and, and according to the situation all the time. So, yes, technique matters, but I don't agree that that every player should uh, have the same kind of technique and and uh, we are not we are human beings we are different in so many ways and uh, so so there's no cookie cutter form that that suits for everyone uh, i mean that that sometimes yeah coaches like to mold the players uh, because of their beliefs that what is good technique i try to allow individual differences as much as i can it's difficult for me too but there is some some uh, optimal technique in my mind what i think what i what i search for but i i try to allow as much individualism as as possible and um, and then for coaches one of my goals is, is, is like um, there's a saying that if it ain't broken don't fix it so exactly yeah that is yeah. important i, I think the coach I agree with that yeah, the coaches should know, should know every detail there is about shooting as, and as much as possible. But they only should pick up the best things that actually the play, player needs at the moment on, on their way on, lear, on learning. And players don't... I, there was time in my development as a coach also that I poured everything I knew on, on the poor player. And uh, I hope that I, I didn't mess up anything too too much but but yeah i've been i've been around that circle so many times analyzing into bits and pieces the technique and then again also i have done the synthesis of putting them back together and then again exploding everything to the walls and, and scrap pieces and and that's that's how it took it took years to to create my coaching philosophy I tell you something else I noticed, which is quite strange. On every level that, that I've been, high school, college, NBA, Europe, the junior leagues, whatever, it's always the guys who are the best shooters that spend more time doing extra shooting. And it's always the guys who are not good at shooting are the first ones off the floor after practice or before practice. I, I find that to be strange, but it is what it is. Yeah, um, it's good that you mentioned that because I was I was thinking just just a couple of days ago about that, and and I've been thinking that a lot. I have both boys and girls as my students, and. Uh, uh, I'm lucky to, to coach basketball players. I don't think there's a need to have boys or girls like separate technique, but there seems to be. And the reason is that there are a couple of reasons too. And my, my theory is that the boys are stupid enough to be addicted to shooting basketball. It's like monotonous thing, but, but that's what we like. I'm, I'm the same kind of guy. If I wouldn't coach, I would probably just shoot my, by myself. I love it. I love the sound of, of basketball going through the net. And, uh, and there's something addictive to that. And I can do it like, like eight hours a day or something. Yes, it's just, yes, yes. Girl, girls are much smarter than, than, than boys and they have other things in life that they are considering that might, might belong here. That, that's one thing, that girls are smarter. But also that is, that is their problem because they are listening to their coaches and coaches are, they are giving well-intended instructions. But following those instructions literally can be a problem if you don't understand the whole thing and, and there is there's a tendency in old school teaching and in, in any sports also that we do this because it has always been done like this 
And right. I think I, th I think it says the responsibility of every generation to to challenge the the previous ones, and not in a disrespectful uh, disrespectful way, but in the way that that they have to be like uh, like uh, base those fundamentals. They have to be put uh, p uh, pieces together again and have the, the the fundamentals correctly. Not because it was done before like that. It, it has to evolve, and there has to be room for to evolve also. So, so just repeating some information like it was done before. I'm not sure if it was correct before. Some it was, some maybe not. And it, it, yeah, but there has been this this contradiction that also that I have been seeing because I wasn't originally a basketball player. I came to the sport and watched a lot of TV, watched a lot of YouTube videos. Nowadays, everything is available, and you can slow it down as much as you can. You, uh, the, the video quality is excellent. You can zoom in and. Uh, I started noticing that the there there were a, a couple of of core instructions that that weren't happening, and that's that's one reason that I think that that boys are getting so much better at shooting because uh, a they don't listen to to their coaches, which is, which might be sometimes too. <laughs> they play basketball, they watch basketball more, and. Uh, and um, yeah, I, th I think those those might be the main reasons that. And they also devote themselves to to strange things, and they are like one-minded, more like. So they don't have distractions when they decide to. I, I'm the same kind. I'm the same kind. Yeah. One hundred percent of people who know me and say that that I could get an ADHD diagnosis, <laughs> but uh, I disagree. I disagree. <laughs> Um, I know I, I know I, I, I can be a, um, maybe pain, pain in the butt sometimes right. and I, I always always um, or sometimes I, I wonder my own persistence that, that how idiot must him be me myself watching this basketball shooting like um, maybe you know but, but most people don't know how much I put my time and effort to, to that and uh, that can be sometimes that I forget some, something else and you just ask my ex-wife <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you say that the ability to learn is a skill when we we're talking about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, ability to learn, maybe, I, I'd say more like curiosity and uh, willingness to, to dig deeper is, is a skill or or maybe it's a character treat. I'm, I'm not sure. But but definitely it's it's really difficult to, to understand learning in that sense that, that what is it is what is actually learned. We actually we 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 observe the, the result and the performance. And that is easy, and of course it has something to do with that. But what was actually learned, and did everybody learn the same things in same order and same way? Learning is a process, and it's really difficult to track afterwards. But the pro uh, the performance and result can be uh, observed, and but, but that is fascinating thing learning, I think. And and it's it's definitely one thing that I'm always uh, up for. And uh, yeah, my ex-wife told me that that I should my head and and so i did so you, I, I, I went to these tests and then the doctor doctors then uh, uh, concluded that after those tests that that she can't uh, put any diagnosis on me because i have succeeded quite a couple of areas in life but she also said that, that yes there is something weird going on in your head <laughs> but uh, i think it's, it's, it's partly partly luck also that i have channeled my energy Energy towards positive things right how do you how do you feel about uh, players beginning practice uh, shooting close to the basket and working their way further from the basket um, first of all, shooting before practice, during the practice, on breaks, and after the practice, I'm all for it. Okay. Uh, starting from the uh, close from from the, the basket is something that I do also sometimes, but that is one differentiation that is that a word? I'm not sure. <laughs> but that what differentiates me from from other shooting coaches, okay. and this I've got uh, from from movement education that I've had during the time I've been in baseball, basketball, <clears throat> and 
it was a it was a question of, of one one teacher in Finland, a professor who asked that that is it always necessary to to start shooting accurate with accuracy first. And then, and I, I was immediately on his side and understood the question because he was he was trying to to and asking that uh, it was just a rhetorical question that that if we should all, uh, shoot quickly first and when it, when we can shoot quickly can we then shoot accurately because okay. yeah that, that's absolutely one thing that I've also also tried but my approach usually is to uh, shoot strong first so fast and strong so just let the ball fly and we do it in pairs in, in group sessions and we just shoot for further and further high up and then in the end of, the, of that specific uh, specific drill we are starting to, to hit the line so it doesn't matter if it's long or short but it, it has to be straight and that is one thing that I, I'd like to emphasize also in, in, in basketball shooting in general that that uh, the good start is if you if you can shoot always if you can shoot high up and straight. It's what do you what do you think? What do you think are the keys to to getting the ball to go straight and shoot? It's a full body motion. It's not just a hand. Uh, when we are talking about throwing, um, at least for boys, girls maybe don't don't shoot. Uh, I mean, throw like stones and balls when they, when they're young, if they are not told to, and if they are not allowed to. And I feel sorry for for modern day young people that they are not allowed to throw snowballs and throw anything. I mean, we just threw everything from access to to anything just. Fighting with my with my brothers, and uh, we got accurate. <laughs> Sorry, brothers. <laughs> and, but anyway, anyway, I, I think um, when we're talking about throwing. Um, we are primates that, that we use hands predominantly, predominantly, and, and we we use our vision. So so we are going to hang on to that. So they are sometimes uh, taking us away from the idea of that like, basketball as a biomechanical thing is is pretty different. It's um, it's a full body motion. It's it's more like a jump and a push or something like that. It's really difficult to to say, but but it, there's no comparison in, in any other sport of, of that motion. If you if you if you uh, start thinking about throwing a javelin or throwing a baseball or or any other ball or implement, uh, what is there in, in sports or or hunting or anything? There's no resemblance to to basketball shooting. And that's also one thing that fascinates me. And uh, I, the, the closest I've come to, to, to compare it to anything is just jumping, just two-legged jump is it's close. And one of my observations also, and it's the most recent ones, is the use of, use of shoulder and hips and elbow. Shoulder, hip, elbow, kinetic chain, and how it, that functions rhythmically on, on the jump shot is huge, and it's a common nominator on all shots. It's really difficult to find a, a shot that, where, where, that, where that's not present. There are like maybe three or four types of, of different shots, that, how I categorize these, but but uh, it, it would be easier to show you and uh, sometimes sometime when, when we hit the gym together after the pandemic right, right, right. I, I'll be more than glad to show you and I'll be more than glad to to, to uh, if you're still shooting the hoops I mean I, I could draw I you all shoot a, a, I still shoot a little bit uh, not a little bit but I'm still shooting <laughs> so yeah yeah uh, I still shoot every, every, every once in a while in a while um what do you what do you think about nowadays it seems uh, you see more players shooting three point shots but the on the free throws the free throw averages go down it seems like nobody you see very few players that are actually good free throw shooters nowadays what what do you think about that 
Yeah, that's that's a shame. Man. That's that's on them. Uh, I mean, there there are. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've I've noticed the same. There are, there are professional players who can't shoot free throws, which are decent shooters, by the way. Exactly. That's that's, exactly. that's amazing. That's amazing. That's part of the profession. And that's the most wanted place in the basketball court to be on the free throw line. Yes. The, yeah. Yes. Uh, it's amazing. Me on the highest I, level. I, I, I don't under. I really don't don't understand it. Uh, if it's a mental thing or. Maybe players are just not putting in enough practice time with the free throws. Uh, I, I, I don't know. You always see guys in the gym shooting three-point shots, but they never work on free throws unless the coach says, let's shoot some free throws. Yeah, there's there's definitely been a change in the in the game. Uh, well, it started in the early '80s when the three point line was line was introduced, but then again, uh, all the time when the when the how the how the history has gone, it, it is the, the three point attempts are just skyrocketing every year. Every year, a new record, and Houston Rockets def, uh, most definitely uh, was was a one one team that 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 started, and um, yeah. They, it's the statistics that that it's, it's um, one point five point more than the two pointer. Yeah, but yeah. all but all points count, and. Uh, uh, when I when I say that that you know, we talk a lot about uh, free throw shooting with my students, and uh, I am suggesting I'm not saying that they should do it because I see some pro players and and good players do it differently also, but I suggest them that to to shoot with um, the same mechanics, the free throw shot as their as their uh, any other shot or almost any other shot, the basic shot, what I call, and I do that because then. Uh, the, every th free throw shot is a reminder of a good shooting technique and it's also a practice of any other shot you know, at any other time you get also like a couple of repetitions during the games when you uh, shooting free throws you are again yeah, then exactly. at your old, own pace you are reminding yourself of a good shooting technique you do your own man mantras you don't have to go through every every detail you do what you do to get quality reps and you get a couple of uh, two or three of them of those and then you start playing again and when you shoot the next shot you are in more in, into that and then therefore i don't i don't teach to shoot free throw differently if it's not but it's up to the player that what, what he or she likes to do when uh, when when I was playing and when I was learning different shots and, and everything, coaches used to tell me that it's always important when you shoot to keep to get your shoulders square to the basket. I guess that's not so important now. From what I've heard from Rob Wador and and you, the the main thing is to have your hand facing straight to the basket. Hand and and definitely your, how the, how your wrist is flexing and uh, extending. Yeah, that is that is true. And actually, that has never been true. That has been said. That is one of those those myths that are circulating still in the coaching world. That get yourself squared. What does that mean? I'm not sure. Because if you again, if you if you interpret that literally and square to the basket, you are and ten toes to the basket is is the same thing. Right. Ten toes to the basket shoulders to the basket it's really difficult at least for for guys who are building up muscle to get and also elbow in so you are cramped in, a, in this and a hand under the ball and then the shooting come becomes robotic and tensed and that is not the, the purpose and uh, what i have seen from videos it was it was uh, shooting mechanics have hasn't changed uh, since since 80s or 90s they're shooting just the same I'm not. I'm not saying that that they are. They were more squared in the '80s. I don't think so. I don't think so. It's, it was a miss. But square to the basket. Yes, you have to turn somewhat around to, uh, towards the basket. Somewhat. Yes. But that is one thing that I, I started to turn uh, to teach the turn or the tilt at some point when I started this uh, individual coaching. But nowadays I don't do that anymore that much because I don't see that. 
is a problem. More of the problem I, I saw that also when I taught teach, I taught uh, shooting it was like when I mentioned the the turn that your feet should point the opposite uh, direction than your shooting hand. I mean right. shooting hand that's but you know, the, uh, you should be you should be facing a little bit off. And then all this all the student or most of the student uh, started to overturn. They they did it too much. They they was almost like sideways, and then they uh, rotated their torso towards the basket anyway. Okay. And I said, if you, if you like to shoot your upper body in that position, please put your and place your feet under you, so you can jump on balance, and you can direct your jump to the direction you are shooting. And uh, so, I think the the turn or the tilt that comes kind of natural. And if it doesn't, and if it if I see some tension, or maybe I have to correct the mistake that some other coach has done with with his uh, well meant instruction, but but not so fruitful maybe to that right. student if he, if he or she is taking that literally. So so I I can say that you can turn them a little bit. So open your chest be able to breathe and let the ball fly uh, my goal for players is to, to make shooting as natural and easy and effortless as possible do you do you think the same principle applies to fadeaway shots a lot of guys are shooting fadeaway shots I used to shoot fadeaway shots uh, do you think the same principles apply uh, that's an imp uh, important uh, shot to to master, but that is not what I start with. I start with, uh, with for instance, young younger players when they, when they don't have the leverage of the other, on their arms. Their arms are pretty short when they are younger. Right. So on fadeaways, you don't you don't get the luxury of a power production from your hips and it's remote jump because your your jump is is directed other other way. Yes. So, yes, yes. so you have to have the extra power from from somewhere else. And for instance, like. Dirk Nowitzki has so long arms, so the leverage is, is huge. The ball is the same for everybody, almost like, but almost. And but, but the young people, they just they just lack power, and the, the length of the of the arm is in that sense is is important. But fadeaways are important, and you have to practice them. And you you shouldn't shoot a shot that you haven't practiced. Maybe, I mean that that if you can imagine a certain shot that you might need in a game situation, then practice it. And that, that's the only way to get better. Otherwise, it's just a just a toss it up and hope for the result. And and I also what I used to do in my shooting practice when I was working alone, uh, I would have to whatever area you're shooting in, I would give myself a number that I would have to make. Let's say I'm shooting 10 shots. I would have to, in some places, I would have to make eight out of 10 before I would go to another spot. Or if it's three point shots, of course, I would take it down. I would have to make six, then I could move. Uh, do you think that type of, of training is, is good? All the time, all the time I do, I do the same. Setting standards, uh, I think I, I think are crucial because that, that builds uh, uh, ability to handle pressure and to, to and consistency which is which is important that that you have to be able to concentrate on every shot as as unique shot you don't have the previous shots or the future shots in front of you you have to be present that's one of my martial arts um, uh, revelations that that here and now is where life happens and there nothing else matters and um, you have to you have to hyper focus on on the, the performance that you are in you have to still maintain relaxed thing some thoughts might might come more than or back then but you are holding yourself accountable when you're doing doing this setting these standards and i have i have youth and a little bit younger guys i have a different set of standards and pro players are shooting a little bit higher standards also i said okay if you're a pro player you have to do it much better what uh, what is this uh, you call it Frankenstein's monster? What does that mean? Yeah, <laughs> I, I had to recollect a little bit, but yeah, now I don't remember. Yeah, um, 
as, I, as I've told you here, the, the coach's playbook on, when it comes to shooting technique and biomechanics is, is, is big. I have many tools, many drills, and many details to anal how to analyze the, the shooting technique. But they are individual pieces, and if you're not able to put them together as, as one living creature, then it becomes a mon Frankenstein's monster. So they are just pieces here and there, but it's not actually a living thing. And you can't shoot a, a basketball uh, just by adding some details there, here and there. You know, you just have to be human being and, and function as, an, as, a, as nature is meant to you to do. I mean, the natural thing is, is important to me. I tell you this, with, with the, in today's basketball, there certainly is an emphasis on shooting. And it's great, it's great to have coaches like yourself who can help this process go further. Uh, I, I think that, that no matter whether somebody likes it or not, you have to take a good look at it and see if it works. And you're, you're, you're working with a good friend of mine, Batu. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I bet he's, he's a great student. Yeah, shout out to Batu. Definitely. Yeah, yeah he's he he comes to, to all of my all of my, my, my summer camps in, in, in Helsinki and and you know what what a great guy and, and basically what a great family he has Absolutely. around him. Absolutely. And speaking speaking of summer camps, I'd like to take this time to invite you to be one of my guests uh, next summer at my summer camp in Helsinki. I will, let you, I will let you know more, more details about it. And I guess it depends on restrictions and all this stuff. But I will let you know more about it. Thank you for the invitation. Definitely. Let's make we'll that love, happen. We'd love to. to have you. Yeah, excellent. And yeah. at this time, you say, I'm going to wrap this up. And I say, thank you. Uh, for coming and it, I, you know, you really opened my eyes to to a lot, and hopefully, people who watch this will will also learn a little about it, and and we'll see. You know, keep going. I think you, I think you're on to something really, really good here, and I wish you good luck in the future. Thank you, and thanks for the opportunity to come here and, uh, and share this information. That's what I'm all about. I want to inspire people to get in and encourage them to, to get curious. And uh, uh, thanks for having me on, and um, stay healthy, man. Okay, enjoyed it. Yep, talk to you later. We'll keep in touch. Yeah, absolutely. Bye. All right. Bye.